afternoon guys, uh, welcome to another Friday Waffle. Um, weather wise it's getting cold now, um, apparently we had the, the mildest Halloween in record. So yeah it was quite, it was, it was, I wouldn't say it was warm but it was certainly more mild earlier on in the week but it's uh, starting to show what it should be now for uh, for being whatever it is, the 6th of November or something. So I hope you guys are fine, hope you're all keeping well. Um, oh. What have I been doing? Eh, hey, right, firstly, I know you guys uh, are interested, and if not, I'll tell you anyway. Job-wise, um, I applied for two jobs, didn't get one of them, still waiting to hear about the second one. Um, I think, I, th I think, I believe, hope it's going to be um, next week, um, I'm going to find out. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I'm actually, uh, I'm sitting in the house, I'm being paid to sit in the house, and I've got absolutely bugger all to do, I've got no work at all. And um, because my job doesn't exist, um, I've been sort of offering help to sort of the people that do do my job, and uh, they're not really forthcoming with uh, taking me up in it. So right now I'm just uh, working from home. I've got my work's laptop switched on. I check my emails. I've got my uh, BlackBerry thing, which is a pile of shite, which I check every uh, ten minutes or so. Make sure there's no emails coming in. So yeah. So just waiting to find out. Um, I did get a, a phone call there um, from one of my, my sort of fellow colleagues who's in the same position as myself, and uh, he's given me a bit of good news. Um, he's had a phone call from a guy that used to work for the same company that we used to work for, and he's looking for guys on a sort of temporary basis. Um, but um, we're, we've told them it's going to be January until we find out where we stand job-wise. But it's good to know that if things do go tits up then I could have some temporary work and it's uh, quite well paid as well so we'll just wait and see, that's that's a bit of a sort of a, a safety blanket um, type thing hopefully uh, the full time job will think will work out anyway so that's the job front guys gaming wise um, what the hell have I been playing? Aye, I've been playing, I've been playing a bit of uh, Drive Club on the PS4, not a lot, I mean my, my games playing is bugger all compared to some people you know, some people play more than one night than I do in probably a fortnight, probably even a month. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying Drive Club. Um, still absolutely push it. The only thing I would say about Drive Club, and it's it's the one biggest criticism that uh, it's had levelled at it, is, you know, you can be absolutely heading around a course, flat out, you know, you've overtaken four or five cars, you're up to second place, um, and you're about to take first place on the last lap and you happen to stray off the track for a second you end up getting a, a time penalty um, I just wish they had turned that option, made it optional um, it's a stupid thing to do, I mean I've never known any driving game like it where it penalises you so strictly for uh, going off, off the road um, I mean going off the roads part and parcel motor racing you know you don't get, I don't think Formula 1 drivers get penalised for leaving the road, so yeah, that's the only annoying thing about it. But I'm quite enjoying it. Um, what else have I been doing? I've uh, I've made a, an arcade perfect uh, my arse. I'm not going to tell you what game it is, but um, there was a, a shed load of versions to go through. So I've been playing a, a fair bit of that and quite enjoy that actually. I mean, that's one thing I enjoy about the arcade perfect my arse features. I tend to, I mean, I, some of the games that I play, I enjoy. Some of them I've maybe not had any history with, but. By the time you've played them, you're either stupidly sick of them or you quite enjoy it. Um, case in point with Strider, um, I've been playing that since making the Arcade Perfect um, feature. So yeah, that's games wise, that's what I've been playing. I've not been playing a, a whole lot of stuff. Um, I've been making a few videos, I've got a couple of videos there that I've already made which I'm going to be, uh, I'll be uh, putting out next week. Uh, what else did I do? I went to see the specials. Uh, at the Barrowlands in Glasgow last night. Um, uh, I don't know if some of you may have never heard of the specials. There were a Sky Group, I think from Sheffield they came from. Um, or was it Hull? I can't remember. Hull or Sheffield? I think it's Sheffield. Um, awesome group, absolutely awesome. Didn't enjoy it quite as much last night. We were a bit further back, but I don't know what, because we're quite far back, there was an awful lot of people constantly going in and out the venue and uh, and then there was bloody, you know, it's the usual guys with, with people now with fucking smartphones 
say watching a concert and enjoying it, their intent in videoing it on their camera. Uh, and there was a wee girl in front of me and she insisted and she, she spent more time on Facebook than she did uh, actually listening and watching the concert. But uh, still a great gig. Um, the, the, there was a group on, or I say group, in the most, uh, what's the word for the thing, new form of the word, but there was uh, two guys and I have never ever heard as much swearing in all my life than this singer. It was basically a guy would start a, a bass track, it was kind of rap almost, he would start a bass track on his laptop and he would dance along and this other guy was, he was just, all I could see was, it was like a guy with Tourette's shouting, Fucking fucking bastard! Sitting at home wanking! Fucking fuck! Fucking fuck! And that is exactly what it was like. <laughs> I would love to know who they were, I haven't a clue who they were. Two guys, and uh, it was hilarious. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I've never heard the word, the, the phrase, sit at home wanking in a, a song ever, but I have heard it now. Um, yeah, I'll need, to, I'll need to try and find out who they were and see if I can find anything on YouTube because they were absolutely hilarious. But they were so loud as well, I mean the guy was shouting. Actually, as I was going up the stairs to the venue, I could hear this guy, I thought, what the hell's going on here? Not realising that that was actually the support act. So yeah, that was uh, that was quite funny. So that's it, uh, yeah, touched on the job, touched the games, uh, drive club. I think that's it, that's what I've been doing. Uh, nothing else. Uh, did I tell you? Oh yeah, I did. Uh, I did my. I managed to successfully complete my ultra race last Saturday. Um, a wee bit slower than I thought, but you know what? To get around 33 miles over a tough, tough course with virtually bugger all training, um, I'll take that. Um, it was a tough day in the office, really, really hard. But uh, it's. Uh, I've got the bit firmly between my teeth again as regards ultra. In fact, this month I'm, uh, I've got my application form in for the West Highland Way race again, which takes place in June. Uh, you've got all of November to apply for it, and then there's uh, a ballot to see who gets in, so fingers crossed for that. So anyway, you've not come here to listen to me talk pish about running or jobs, anything like that. Pardon me. Um, I've not got a lot for you. I've actually timed in this. I don't want it to run on too long because... Uh, it can bloody go on and on and on and on. Right, uh, first topic I have got here is uh, is there any system, any retro system that you don't have and you've got no um, desire to own and if if that's the case, why? Yeah, there's a, a couple of systems. I think sometimes, sometimes, uh, it's like even games, unless you have a connection to something from the past, you don't have any real desire to play it. So, you know, games on a system that I didn't own, in many cases, I'm not interested. Um, Alright, now with uh, sort of a bit more disposable income, um, coupled with the fact that you can pick up systems for 10, 20 quid now, I've been able to, like all you guys, I've been able to pick up the systems that I just never got to own back in the day. Um, I've pretty much got there with every system that I want. Um, one system which is hugely popular, I mean it's massively, massively popular, but I don't own it, pardon me, I don't own it and I've got absolutely no desire to own it. Don't get me wrong, if I was given one for nothing I would take it, but I'm not interested in buying one. If I saw it dirt cheap at a car boot sale I might pick it up. And that is the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, back then, I had a Commodore 64. Um, the NES, I never, I never had any exposure to it. Um, I was going to say as a kid. I mean, I was a bloody teenager when I had my computer. Um, I never had any exposure to it. None of my mates had NESs. Um, it was all computers, Spectrums, Amstrads, Commodores, BBCs, whatever, Ataris. So I never got to see an NES back in the day. And, you know, looking at, looking at it now, um, I, I always, I always kind of thought of it as being, why would I want that? Because the graphics were pretty shite. And to, my, to me, it looked, 
no better than a Commodore 64, the games. So I never had any real desire to own it. Having said that, um, when I've been making some of my mashups, um, I've been playing the NES under emulation on my meme cab, and I've got to say that, I mean, some of the games, some of the games are cracking. I mean, it's got some really, really stonking arcade conversions, stuff like uh, 10 Yards, 10 Yard Fight, is it? I think it's called, yeah, 10 Yard Fight. Um, there's a few other games which I can't remember, recall offhand. Obviously, you've got your Super Mario Brothers and that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, I think because the first console I owned, I think the first console I owned would be the Super Nintendo. Yeah, Super Nintendo. So that was obviously quite a jump from the NES. So when I got the Super Nintendo, uh, I'd obviously previously owned the, the Amiga as well. I didn't have any desire to, to play what I thought were looking like basically shit 8 bit graphics. Um, I mean, some of the games, they look pretty awful you know, crap sound, but I'm sure there is a, a vast collection of games out there. I'll be honest, part of the reason that I don't have any desire to actually own the thing is down to the sheer size of the thing. I mean, these things are bloody massive. Um, I'm looking down at my, my Sega Saturn here, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out what size it would be. Now, I might be talking bollocks because I don't have one, but is it almost the same size as the original Xbox? It's quite a clunky thing. And I think part of the reason that I'm not interested in owning it is A, it's too big, B, I wouldn't have anywhere to put the damn thing, and C, I've got that on virtually, I've got it on my, oh my, God, my phone, I can emulate it perfectly on my computer, my Xbox, my Pandora, my meme cab, I can emulate it on a, a number of systems, so I don't have any, there's just nothing it's going to make me want to jump out and buy it. Um, possibly if I had I had owned one back in the day or got to use one, then I would be thinking different. Um, not too sure. I'm going to pause this back in two, uh, two seconds, guys. So yeah, if I'd owned one, I may have a desire to own one. Sorry, if I owned one back then, I may have a desire to own one um, now. But that's not the case. I'm trying to think of any other systems. Um, Again, I, I don't know, I mean, there's, there's, my collection is, it's far from me uh, complete, you know, I do have a shitload of systems, um, in fact I should actually do it in the venue at some point, how many I actually own, um, there's a lot of popular systems which I don't own, I mean, I'm trying to think, what popular system do I not own and do I want it, NES, I've already told you, um, what else? Let me think. So, Sega, what have I got? I've got the Master System, which I've got. I've got the Mega Drive. I've got the 32X. I've got the Mega CD. Um, I've got the Sega Saturn. I've got the Dreamcast. So, yeah, I think I've got every Sega console. I don't have, like, the Nomad, which was a, a sort of handheld version of the Mega Drive. So, yeah, I suppose I, I wouldn't mind one of these. Um, Nintendo wise, I mean where do I start, I don't have the NES, not too bothered with the NES, I've got the SNES, got the N64, where are you, there you are up there, I've got the N64, I've got the GameCube, I've got, yeah, um, I've got the Wii U, I've got the Wii, got all these ones, um, I don't have, Atari wise, I mean they're mainly computers, I've got the Atari 2600, I don't think it actually works properly, can't get a proper picture on it. I do have the 7800. Um, I've got multiple. I've got the X. I can never remember the bloody name. But X68. What the hell is it called? Hang on a second, guys. The, it's called. No, I can't even see the name of it. 60, 65 XC, is that? Yeah, I've got that. I've got the, the Atari XL. I've got the 800. I've got the 400. I don't have the Lynx. That was a machine. I actually had the chance to buy um, from a guy that's selling an awful lot of stuff uh, and I was going to buy it and he had a lot of cracking games for it and then he went and bloody sold all the games to somebody else which basically left me with uh, a basic Lynx and nothing else but again looking at it it's a huge bloody machine excuse me I'm spitting, spitting all over the place here it's, uh, it's a behemoth of a machine 
probably drinks or eats batteries like nothing on earth and I figured that if I bought it um, chances are I probably wouldn't it'd probably sit in the shelf unused like a, a shitload of stuff that I've got here I'm looking at you virtual boy um, never get rid of the virtual boy I'll hardly use it I need to actually start making a point of playing it a bit more so yeah the Atari Lynx not too fussed on um, oh you know what I'm going to stop talking about this because I could be here all day um, but yeah I'm just uh, it's uh, the NES is the one standout machine which I've never had any real uh, any desire to win again just because I never really played it didn't have the chance to play it back in the day and always felt that the graphics didn't look any better than the Commodore 64 but uh, yep that's that so anyway how are we doing for time right, we're about 15 minutes um, something that came to mind when I was making my arcade perfect uh, about Strider Strider is a class game. I mean, it's an exceptional game. It looks gorgeous. It plays really well. It's a it's a standout game, you know, from back in the day. Um, really, really nice to play. It looks amazing. And it got me one thinking, why, why didn't I have any desire to play it? And again, it's almost touching on what I've just talked about. If you didn't have any exposure to games as a kid, then you don't have any history with it and you don't miss it. It's like what you never ever had, you don't miss. Now, what I've, uh, what did I say here? How often did you visit arcades? Yeah, um, living in central Scotland, you know, I was simply nowhere near arcades. I mean, I've got a lot of mates who live down south in London and, you know, they lived in various uh, seaside resorts. And arcades, going to arcades at the weekend, probably during the week, whatever, at night time after school, it was part and parcel of their life. It was part of what made them get into video games. Probably for the largest majority of people, the arcades was the first thing that set them off. Then they got a computer and then obviously, you know, they, they got into games and other machines. But yeah, living in Scotland, the nearest, uh, the nearest arcade that I had would be, it was called LA's in Edinburgh. It was on Lothian Road. I think it's now a. It used to. It was then converted into a bloody nightclub. I don't know what it is now. I've not been in Edinburgh so for a long time. Um, yeah, LA's. It was one big arcade. Because back then, you know, you didn't have a lot of money. Um, you had to get buses and that kind of stuff. So it was quite costly going in. So I didn't get to go in very very often. The only other arcades I would say that were even further afield for me would be Portobello, which was a or what it still is, it's a seaside sort of area of Edinburgh. Um, it was a popular holiday destination, believe it or not, back in probably the 50s, uh, 50s and 60s. And it, like all these kind of seaside resorts, it had, uh, it had arcades. But I never, because I didn't have a car, I mean, my dad certainly wouldn't have given me a lift through to play bloody Space Invaders, you know, that, was, that wouldn't have happened. So I never ever got to go to, to, to Portobello. I think I was maybe there once, many, many moons ago. So the only time I ever got to play any arcade machines would be if the local sport, well up at the local sports centre they used to have, um, they always had one machine then, they would keep it for so long and then change it. Um, the machines that they had were track and field, 1942, the first one they had was Space Invaders, I can always remember I was in the judo club and uh, this thing appeared and of course we were all gathered round it and I was crap at it. Um, I used to spend more time just watching other people playing it. And Space Invaders, I can still visualise it in the doom, 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 doom. Absolutely epic. It was just a, it was like nothing you'd ever seen before. Um, yep, yeah, Space Invaders, got track and field, 1942. I think they even got a Neo Geo game at one point. So yeah, that was where I, I got to see arcade games on the most regular basis. But even then, it was maybe only once a week or something, if that. And it was only one machine, so you didn't get you didn't get to, you know, ninety nine percent of games that are that are playing meme. I never got to see back in the day. Um, the only other time would be when we went on holiday. Um, now we never went. My mum and dad never took us to Blackpool or anything like that. They didn't like Blackpool. Um, we occasionally went to. We used to go camping primarily. It was cheap. But bothered me very much. It was cheap and. Uh, you would uh, we would maybe have a day a day trip to Scarborough 
and uh, that was always like the highlight for me because I, I would be given maybe a couple of pounds if that to play in the arcades. Um, but you know, because you never you never got to play many other time, I would be lucky if I lasted thirty seconds in most games. So a pound to me would run out within about ten minutes. You know, it lasted me no time at all. And playing one game once is no good. You've got to keep pumping money into it. So yeah, that was the only time I got to play arcades. The only other time would be um, once a year. Probably I only maybe went in two, three of them. Um, the local in the local community, they used to run a, a, a day trip to Blackpool. You basically got in this bus at six o'clock in the morning. Um, you got down to Blackpool, they dropped you off, and you basically pissed about, did what you want, and then you got the bus back at six o'clock at night. So me and my mate, we used to go down there. We used to go down primarily to try and get cheap computer games. I can always remember picking up, uh, what were they called? It was a compilation by Bo Jolly. And it was all the Imagine games like Pedro and um, Arcadia. I can't remember any other games. Uh, they were all absolutely a pile of wank. Absolutely pish. Um, so yeah, that was the games we got there. But yeah, we, we, we obviously went through the arcades and picked, you know played a few games sort of thing. But again, you know it, because you didn't have any exposure to them, it just, uh, you ran out. So anyway, um, or you ran out of time very quickly when you are playing them. So anyway, to kind of get back on, on, on point, because I never got exposure to, I would say, 99% of video games, I didn't have any connection with them. I never got to play them, so I couldn't, I couldn't say oh, that was a great game or that wasn't a great game. Then, that all changed in 1997 when uh, MAME came out. Um, suddenly, you had this the world opened, you had all these arcade games that, I mean, I don't ever read about in, in computer and video games, there was no such thing as internet, so it was, you maybe read, you know, arcade, uh, what do you call them, computer and video games used to have a, a sort of arcade section where they would review a game, and I remember like, 10 yard fight, um, you know, numerous games, slap fight, whatever it was, um, so that was it, so I had no exposure to them, and then the only time I got to play the game was when, um, I picked up the release, uh, I picked up a conversion for my Commodore 64 and 9 times out of 10 it was usually crap compared to the arcade one but that's, you know, so games like Slap Fight, Arkanoid, um, Bionic Commandos, um, Outrun, I did play Outrun a wee bit um, back in the day all these games, the only time Commando, that the first version I ever played of these games was on the Commodore 64 um, and yeah, you always had the, you know, that you had the arcade shots in the back, and you always wished that your version was going to be as good as that, and it never, it always turned out to be nothing like it. Um, yeah, Kung Fu, that's another one. Um, so yeah, all these games. Oh, I, I completely forgot there was another arcade which I used to be able to play in. The, it was a Bathgate when I went to a college in Bathgate. They had an arcade. It was actually quite a good arcade. So I got exposure to what did I get to play there? Rolling Thunder. Sky Kid, R Type, Star Wars, I'd sit down Star Wars, um, not for very long though. Buggy Boy, um, Tekken World Cup, um, Tiger Heli. So these were the few games that I got to play, um, got exposure to. So yeah, when Mame came out, I suddenly had all these hundreds of games. Now, stuff like Strider, you, you could say, well, why didn't you play Strider? But I suddenly went from. Uh, I went from nothing to having exposure to maybe like several thousand games and when you get all these games in one fell swoop you end up going for the ones you remember so stuff like Strider and I'm, I dare say there's a lot of other games classic arcade games that I just never got to play and I'll probably never really realise unless somebody actually points it out to me so yeah that's probably the reason why I don't have any affinity to sort of like you know good games like Strider because I simply never got to play them uh, back in the day, so yeah, that's uh, that. And the, the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, right, this one again, this was something that came to mind when I was uh, doing my mashup of uh, what do you call it, Drive Club. Excuse me, I'm saying, guys, I'm a wee, I could edit it out, but bollocks to that. Yeah, Drive Club. When I, I actually opened it up on camera um, to play it, and one thing, in fact, I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the game down just a second. 
Hey, da 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 da. Right, let's have a wee look. A couple of things I want to. You stay there. Don't fall. Virtual Game Boy. Not Virtual Game. Virtual. Virtual Boy. Don't want to drop that. Right, you've got that. And where are you? Come to Dad. Yeah. One thing that was apparent when I was opening up Drive Club was how little buck or how little bang you get for your buck. Um, don't get me wrong, you know, the games themselves nowadays, you know, pound for pound the games are probably cheaper. You know, you're paying ten pounds back in nineteen eighty five for a, a a game that was uh, that would probably last you a couple of weeks if if that. Now you're getting state art games for fifty quid so you know, pound for pound it's probably probably this is less it's probably cheaper than a C64 game when you take into consideration inflation. But yeah, the thing that the, the point that um, I want to make is uh, do you miss all the, uh, the sort of paraphernalia or the stuff that you used to get with games? I mean, nowadays the discs actually in the thing. You get your cheapo DVD box like that, you open it out expecting to find a big thick manual, and what do you get? That. You get a single. Single piece of paper, that is instructions, that is what you get. Tells you the controls, you know, steer, accelerate, change view, that is it. That's my receipt in there, that is it, nothing else. Does it tell you in there? No it doesn't, it just tells you about piracy and precautions. Never even noticed that before. That is it. So yeah, you don't get an awful lot. Um, now maybe that, that's a bad example. Um, I'm sure Watch Dogs, which is up there, but I can't be asked get, going up to get it. But let's have a quick, let's have a quick swatch to see if I'm talking shit. Right, let's see what. What do you get with Watch Dogs? Right, okay, you get a, <laughs> you get a little, uh, a little instruction booklet. It's not exactly what you'd call jam packed. But this, the point of this uh, one isn't so much how crap it is nowadays, but it's do you miss the games of uh, yesteryear? I'm trying to find. Uh, Okay, I mean here's an example, here's an example here, um, you've seen this, there's probably bugger all in it, this what's it called, Conflict in Vietnam, in no, 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 19, uh, it's for the Atari XL XE, it's a disc, now there's a fair bit of weight in this, you get a lovely, lovely box, some really nice artwork, in the box, now how much did this cost does it say? No. Probably about 20 quid maybe. Got a nice box in it. Got to be in it to win it. You get no you can you can maybe see there an absolute crackingly huge big I mean look at this. You know it's got maps, operations manual, the basics of com a uh, command. Supplying logistics victory. Now this isn't even game three. This isn't even in different languages. This is all in English. So this whole manual, I mean how many pages is there? There is almost, in fact there's over a hundred pages. There's a hundred and ten pages. Um, hundred and ten pages, yep. So you get a big thick manual. Now not every game had that, but you know, that was just one I plucked off the shelf. I didn't deliberately go and pick that one. You also get this. What's this? Microprose. It's basically showing you all other games that you can get. You get that. You've got your obviously you've got your warranty card and you've got the disc itself. But yeah, just uh, you know what? When you bought a disc, when you got a big box like this, it was always exciting getting home and and fingering through the, the manual. Um, I mean the, the classic one for me was Elite. Um, you know, you had your uh, you had the the overlay which you put on the keyboard. Did you get a badge? I can't remember if you got a badge, I maybe imagining that but you got a poster because I can always remember I had a poster of all the different ships in Elite up in my bedroom wall and I've actually got a picture, a photograph of me playing my Commodore 64 um, with this poster on the wall, it's quite funny. Um, 
So yeah, you got a novella called was it Dark Wheel, I think it was, if memory serves me correctly. So you got a novella with it as well. You got the overlay, you got a poster. You know, you just got it was it you really felt like you were getting something. I mean you could go and copy the the, the tape or disc from your mate and you just had this a, a blank disc with, you know, a biro pen elite written across it. Um, but when you bought a game like that, you got all the instructions, you really felt like you were kind of getting value for money. Um, do you miss that? Or would you much rather, uh, I was going to say, have, have them cut down on these things because you can, uh, you know, that will save costs, but you're still paying 50 quid for a, a full price game, so it's a lot of money. I suppose part of the reason could be, um, you know, it's just accepted nowadays that... Uh, it's accepted nowadays that people have the internet so you can sort of Google instructions and that kind of stuff. You know, you can Google and look at tip, plane tips and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I still think, you know, if, at the very least, if they're giving away, if you're buying a game, you should at least get some kind of instructions um, with it to tell you what you're actually doing. So do you miss uh, the big boxes and the packaging that you got with these machines? Uh, I'd be interested if you want to put your comments down below or else even better, do a sort of VR response type thing. So I'm just going to pause this a wee second, guys. Okay, just when I was putting that other one back, um, I discovered this. Um, what, this is for the Atari 32XK. <laughs> I quite like the uh, the box. The one thing I love about this game is the smell. Woo! It smells so old. It's got that real fusty smell to it. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm just, I don't know if you can see that, the graphics of this game, probably not. Yeah, computer game of the year, new animated graphic, Christ, that's the new graphics, I'll take to see the old ones. It's a cassette for the, by Epix, and let's see what's in this, it feels rather heavy, we've got a tape. Now this is exactly what I'm talking about guys, oops, I'll start my timer so I know I'm not waffling too long. You've got your Temple of Apsai commands. The mighty Temple of Apsai dedicated to that insect god who claims knowledge far superior to that of other gods lies buried under a vast slide of earth. Over the years a village grew. Yep, okay. Yep, so I've got all the different key presses. Some people have actually written, written stuff on it. Yep, so you've got your key thing. No idea what this is. Not right, you get a, a typed letter telling you how to load the cassette. My goodness, this must be, this came out in 1980, that makes it 90, 2000, 2000, 34 years old. The enclosed cassette contains a tarry version of Temple of Appside designed for use with 32K. Blah blah blah. Okay, and then you also get this Temple of Apsai, you know what I mean? A huge big manual. You really felt like you were getting something for your money. Oh, what's this? That's just some pages that have fallen out. Yeah, you know what I mean? You just you just don't get that anymore. That was all part and parcel of the excitement of getting a new game, is getting the instructions and everything. That is nothing else in there. Okay. I actually tried to sell that on uh, on eBay, and didn't get any anyone interested. So if anybody watching this is interested in Temple of Apsai, I'm sure we could come up with some uh, some sort of deal. Yep, that's that. Anyway, guys, that's uh, it's going half an hour, so I think I'm going to wrap this up. Um, coming up. What have we got? I'm going to be doing obviously more 10 minute mashups. Um, I'm going to continue with my arcade perfects. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. I'm kind of wondering whether I need to do. I'm going to start doing another. Uh, what, the hell, what the hell did I call it? Oh, Christ, I can't even remember what I called it. The feature where I played a game to see if I could get any better at it. I can't remember, I had a name for it, but that's terrible, I can't even remember what one feature was called. Um, but I need to get a game that I could actually play through. The, pardon me, the Resident Evil 4. Um, I'm not convinced about that. 
it dragged on far too long. Uh, I was getting fed up playing it and I'm sure, in fact looking at the views, I could probably tell that most people were getting bored of even playing the damn thing or watching me playing it, which I don't. It was getting boring for me playing it. So I can imagine how boring it must have been actually watching somebody playing it. So yeah, I probably wouldn't do another uh, completion one like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it can be a bit weird and sort of thing. So yeah, I'll need to think of another game that I might start playing. Um, I'm always thinking of uh, trying to think of new ideas. What I was going to say, guys, if uh, if you've got any any topic you would like me to talk about, like to hear my views on, please put it below, and I shall try and feature that in a future uh, uh, Friday waffle. Anything at all, preferably game related. I mean, uh, I don't mind talking about other bits and pieces, but you know, this is primarily a a retro gaming channel so anything at all that you want me to talk about any questions you've got please uh, pop them below and I shall uh, I'll give you my thoughts and uh, witterings on them and uh, and I still that only I can do um, anything else if there's any game any particular game you want me to look at um, any any sort of feature that you think I could maybe have a crack at doing please let me know as well guys um, I would appreciate that so I think that just about wraps it up. Nothing else to really say. So yeah, this isn't too bad. It's only about 35 minutes. Well, slightly longer once I add on the intro and that kind of stuff. So anyway, guys, listen. Um, if you're watching this on Friday, hope you have a fantastic weekend. If it's Saturday or Sunday, hope you're having a great weekend. And if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Um, please leave all comments down below as usual. If you want to see more guff from my good self, please uh, subscribe if you enjoy the video please like it if you don't enjoy it give me a thumbs down apparently even thumbs down uh, helps to boost your uh, your sort of search results so even thumbs down are good um, I'm on Twitter you can follow me on Twitter main meister so as soon as I upload a video it appears uh, on Twitter so that's it that's it guys um, as usual thanks for watching